My name is John Moore. I've spent almost a decade covering our wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Today I'm on assignment, traveling across our country, meeting all kinds of military families, and learning what it means to be a hero. That's, that's really, that's really quite nice. I was drafted when I was 18 years old, and then they sent me to Vietnam. The enemy, they attacked us with mortar rounds, had a piece of shrapnel metal, they went into the side of my arm and came out on the top here. So it just ripped my arm in two. I was left out in the jungle. That was one of the most horrifying days. I would cry sometimes. You're not a man if you don't cry. And believe me, it's, sometimes it's good to cry. Just like that, if I could get a smile from you. Uh, you perfect. Yes. <laughs> and guapo. Guapo. <laughs> <laughs> my family are my heroes. No, I think, I think... Call my mom, but don't bring your mother in. But she already had come in, and she looked down and saw my leg. They're the ones that I live for. What is the happen? <laughs> and then the ambulance came, I said, get two ambulances, one for her, one for me. By being exposed to Agent Orange, I have cancer. On a daily basis, I try to overcome everything that I can. Remember, Lake Michigan belongs to us. It's full of my tears. I lost my husband, Edwin Orlando Rivera, in a jet ski accident five years ago. He had just told me how proud he was to be my partner. He died in my arms in the middle of Lake Michigan. As a soldier, that was one of the hardest things that could have ever happened to me because I couldn't save him. I didn't realize that I was going through post-traumatic stress. I was in the middle of a battlefield every day. Wow, it's cold now. <laughs> yeah, started high. On January 22nd, we were on our way to Bagnet International Airport. We left around dusk, probably the worst time to be outside in Iraq. Not even 10 to 15 seconds later, boom. All I could see was a bright light, like someone punched me in the eye, claimed the life of my driver and my interpreter and took the leg of my team leader. Worst part of the night was calling the parents. Well, it's well, like... Saturday morning, and we come off the elevator and walk to read. And you see a young lady with no arms and no legs looking at you with the saddest, saddest eyes. Like, it's hard because I wasn't there to hold them when got her. That's why it's so hard for us sometimes. We relive memories and it's rough. 
They worry about you all the time. I had to reassure her and say, hey, I'll be back, don't worry. It's not my time yet. That's a little, that's better. <laughs> Maybe, um, if you bring your arm around back, and it's kind of, oh. <laughs> that's great. I came home from Iraq and Lori moved in with me this April. <laughs> I have three baby girls. Two of them are twins. <laughs> Having them around me is a blessing because there is no better medicine than my baby's smile. They are my three little angels. I've been given a second chance because I certainly was about to die. I was wounded in Iraq in 2004. When I got hit, uh, I, I feel like the world, you know, stop. There's the actual firefight taking place and that's me on the floor. The moment of the blast, I felt completely disoriented. I called for my mother. That was the scariest thing, the feeling of being penetrated by a bullet. I knew right away that that eye was gone. And I saw inside of me that I was still alive. And that sense of being alive completely overtook any other thing that was missing at that time. Unless I fall down. You know what, John? It is a beautiful world. Especially when I am able to make out which of my girls is in front of me. I picked up a couple years ago was racing. Before I came home for good from Walter Reed, I made it an issue to drive and try to get used to it. It just helps me get past the whole fact that I'm handicapped. The roughest part about coming home from recovery was seeing how people were going to treat me that I've known my whole life. Going back to school for the first time was really nerve-wracking. And I was worried if I could handle it or not. I had to have the same confidence that I had about walking. You said it'll be a half a year to a year or so before you'll walk or run. Two months I was walking. And then three months later I was running. It's bad to tell me I can't do something. <laughs> when I bought this house, I thought I was going to be on my own and then rebuilding together. Redid all my windows, carpeting, walls, drywall, painting throughout my house, and then built me a garage on top of it. 
which is the best part about it, was the garage. So I have somewhere to work on my car instead of onto the ground. That's it. That's not it. No, 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 no. There. That's not so good. There we go. That's alright, he keeps changing it up. He's got a good... There we go. My children are a balance in my life. The things that keep me strong. I can just remember the day I had them. You know, the doctor just goes and throws that baby right on my, my chest. Since the children had lost their father, I wasn't sure how to do it by myself. Work on my home has given me hope that this home is gonna to come together and be the home that I always dreamed of for my children. I never had enough to invest in my home and make it a little better, so I got into this program, Heroes at Home, and they really have helped me a lot. To the people that has been donating, I'd like to say thank you. It is a gift of love. <laughs>